Carbohydrates. You've probably been told at just about every bearing analysis on the matter. You've probably been told by countless semi-professional fitness and nutrition gurus that carbs are great. But you've probably been told by your local slimming world rep that carbs make you fat, carbs make you bad. Diets like keto almost eliminate the utility of carbohydrates altogether. Suggestive weight loss plans aim to go cold turkey and carbohydrates due to their insulin response and potential weight influence. Or maybe you're diabetic and you've experienced the reality of sugars and their altering effects on the body with insulin spikes. However, carbohydrates have played a crucial and essential role in human evolution, along with the functions in health and utilization thereof. In fact, researchers suggest that the consumption of carbohydrates played a crucial role in the acceleration of human evolution. As humans moved to meat-based diets and started to grow larger brains, carbohydrates aimed towards that accommodation of increased metabolic demands. Ever had brain fog? The feeling where you just do silly things and not thinking straight? In most cases, that's a lack of carbohydrates. Today, we're going to look at the digestible basics of carbohydrates. To do this, however, we need to break this down into three sections. But I promise you, it won't take long for you to grasp a firm understanding on this by the end of the video and the benefits you'll reap from it in your training and your fitness journeys. Of course, before we do so, if you haven't already, be sure to watch our episode one here in the link on proteins. That'll give you a nice base understanding of what we're going into this. Now, let's get started. Now, all this goes about saying when we discuss this, this in the element and conceptualization of the effects it has on muscles and training and your performance and a little bit weight loss. This has nothing to do with other aspects of health. Now, to summarize this teaching into something digestible, let's look at the three breakdown categories that we're gonna look at. Firstly, what are carbohydrates? Namely, the effects on their body. And secondly, the primary difference of carbohydrates, such as sugars, starches, fibers. And then thirdly, a case for why you should be consuming carbohydrates and the optimization and practice of such, and how it would look in a daily use. So, let's get to it. Case one, what are carbohydrates? The scientific classification, and again, there won't be too much of this, but in these videos, I feel it's important to include the initial definition. Carbohydrates, or carbs, are sugar molecules along with proteins and fats. Carbohydrates are one of the three main nutrients found in foods and drinks. Your body breaks down carbohydrates into glucose. Glucose, or blood sugar, is the main source of energy for your body cells, tissues, and organs. Glucose can be used immediately or stored in the liver and muscles for later use. In terms of growth and development, um, it's to supply energy for growth, body functions, and activity. Build a new tissue, allowing for normal use of fats in the body, providing the building blocks for some essential body compounds. So, I'm going to interpret that into simpler, fast terms that's relative to your interest. Carbohydrates are essentially forms of sugar. When you consume carbohydrates, these get converted into glucose, a type of sugar, which is used for energy. Parts of your brain solely operate using glucose and need this, and your muscles especially are hyper efficient when running off glucose. So when you consume carbs, it's like filling up your car. It's fuel, efficient fuel, the desired fuel. Now, what else happens when carbohydrates enter the body? Well, it causes an insulin response. What is insulin and why does it matter within the discussion of muscle growth and maintenance? Well, as most of you with diabetes will know, or with anyone you know with diabetes, insulin is a hormone created by your pancreas that controls the amount of glucose in your bloodstream at any given moment. It also helps store glucose in your liver, fat, and muscles. Finally, it regulates your body's metabolism of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. The reason spike in insulin matters in terms of training, especially bodybuilding, is that it causes the muscles to absorb nutrients quickly after a workout. For example, as Enhanced drugged bodybuilders will know uh, they supplement insulin separately. 
Insulin works in synergy with steroids. Steroids spawn new muscles, whereas insulin inhibits the catabolic aspect in the muscle liver. Catabolic, by the way, meaning the burning of muscle. By increasing the synthesis of glycogen and proteins and promoting the entry of glycogen and amino acids into the muscle cells with one event, thereby improving stamina. Now, for people losing weight, I haven't forgot about you. While your insulin is spiking and your blood sugars, the body isn't really in a catabolic mode to metabolize through its fats. So your current weight burning process will be essentially temporarily shut off until the insulin spike is down again. Every time you consume some form of foods or carbs, you create an, an insulin response, small or large. This is why it's vital not to snack all the time. And that really is the key to weight loss. And with the obvious, don't over consume your calories. Case two, types of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates come in many variant forms. For sugars, glucose is found in fruit, honey, some vegetables. Fructose, fruit and honey. Sucrose from sugar cane. Lactose in all types of milk, including breast milk. So if your missus is pregnant, you could see it a glass or two. You also have sugars like dextrose, which is basically the same as glucose. Then you have multidextrin, cyclodextrin, which are highly processed and used for various things, such as carb supplements and drinks. Some create higher insulin responses, some more stable, steady, and longer. There are a lot of different types of sugars, all with slightly different happenings in the body. But at the end of the day, essentially, they're all carbs. Straight sugarcane is still a carb. Theoretically, you could consume just sugarcane, which would prove to be efficient for building and maintaining muscle. In fact, some bodybuilders from the 70s and 80s have done just that. Some, believe it or not, had their macros at 90% plus carbs before going on stage. Now, of course, let us break this down into actual worthwhile information for you to use at your disposal in a practical basis. There are three categories of carbs. Sugars, as we've explained. They are also called simple carbohydrates because they are in the most basic form. They can be added to foods such as sugar and candy, desserts, processed foods, and regular soda. They also include the kinds of sugars that are found naturally in fruits, vegetables, and milk. The next one you have, starches. They are complex carbohydrates which are made of lots of single sugars strung together. Your body needs to break down starches into sugars to use them for energy. Starches include bread, cereal, and pasta. They also include certain vegetables like potatoes, peas, and corn. Final one is fiber. It is also a complex carbohydrate. Your body cannot break down fibers in most cases, so eating food with fiber can help you feel full and make you less likely to overeat. Diets high in fiber have other health benefits. They may also help prevent stomach or industrial problems such as constipation. They may also help lower cholesterol and blood sugar. Fiber is found in many foods that come from plants, including fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, beans, and whole grains. Almost everything contains carbohydrates of some degree, but of course, we have main foods that are just purely and mostly carbs. These include, ready for this? <gasps> Greens such as bread, noodles, pasta, crackers, cereals, and fruits, and rice, and apples, and bananas, and berries, and mangoes, and melons, and oranges, dairy products such as milk, yogurt, dried beans, lentils, and peas, snack foods, sweets, cakes, cookies, candy, and other desserts. Juices, regular sodas, fruits, drinks, sports drinks, energy drinks, starchy vegetables such as potatoes, corns, and peas. Were you writing that down? Now, you're probably wondering from that list, what are the best types of carbohydrates that I should be consuming? Well, yeah, you do need to eat the correct kind of carbohydrates, but in my opinion, if you're weight training, you can get away with some that health professionals may not suggest. As I said, like straight sugar cane, but for example, when eating grains, stick to whole grains, that are things like porridge, brown rice, etc. But again, my suggestion for weight trainers and people that aren't exactly focused solely on weight loss, consume starchy white stuff. If you go into a health professional website or a national health care site, you will see deterrence against sugar foods and non-whole grain stuff. But in my opinion, these utilize the best when we are talking training. Case three, why you need carbs. Okay, now we're getting into it. Negating the fact that our brains operate better on carbohydrates and certain areas of the brain run solely on glucose. The first thing we need to understand and accept here is that weight training does not burn fat as fuel. It burns sugar. This isn't debatable. And if you aren't getting your sugar from your fruits and vegetables, cereals or whole grains, where's the muscle going to extract the fuel from? 
it's going to do it in the form of proteins, which is the next available and semi-efficient source. But that's the very problem. It's not as efficient as carbohydrates. And what does that mean? It means in order for the muscle to continue to contract, it's going to pull its fuel from its own muscle, meaning you are going to burn muscle. Allow me to explain this. There is an amino acid in your muscle called alanine. You've probably heard this through other supplements. Without sufficient sugars, this will be broken down and sent to your liver and turned into glucose. This is why carbohydrates are protein sparing. It gives the muscle adequate fuel, the fuel it needs, without it having to extract from other areas. Carbs should comprise the majority of your calorie allotment. It's the only fuel sufficient enough to be used in high intensity training, muscle contraction, and if it isn't present in sufficient quantities, your body can turn the proteins you ingest and your own muscle tissue into glucose, the blood sugar used for energy. It does this by sending it to the liver, and here it is changed. Carbohydrates that are stored in the muscle is glycogen. This also maintains the water balance in the muscle. The muscle being mostly water, 72% in fact. This is something very important to keep in mind. And if you do not consume an efficient amount of carbs, your body almost switches to running off a second backup generator, attempting to use proteins as its fuel source. And as outlined above, this is not sufficient. Now also keep in mind from an area of weight loss focus as well, it's just not practical or realistic to remove these from one's diet entirely. We live in a busy modern society now, and carbs are, well, really nice. Depriving yourself of them for prolonged periods of time will just bring back habits even harder with a vengeance. Okay, so cheat code blueprint. I gave this in the last episode on protein, so I'm going to give you in this whole learning what it would look like transferred over to a dad or someone looking to consume this efficiently to aid towards our goals. Okay, this will mainly be prescribed, by the way, to people who are active training and wanting to be the most efficient they can. Okay, timer please, go. Start your day off preferably with low digestible carbohydrates, namely in the form of whole grains such as porridge. Throughout the day, consume a varying portion of carbs with more or less every meal. This can be from practically anything, but especially good forms to stay steady in your insulin response and weight control. Things like rice, potato, pasta, bagels, cereal, rice cakes, bananas, pancakes, some breads, preferably whole wheat, will be amazing places to start. Before you work out, make sure to consume carbohydrates. I like bananas as they have potassium in them, and potassium is also held in the muscle along with glycogen to help with contraction, etc. Cereal is good too, and even a line of dark chocolate is the ticket. Remember to replenish your glycogen after your workout with carbohydrates again, because these can be from the form of similar types as we've just discussed. I hope this video was informative and has broken down the macronutrients for you in a consumable fashion. Please comment below of any success you've had implementing carbs into your diet and be sure to subscribe and like the video if you find it helpful because it really helps us also. Until next time for episode three where I'll be discussing fats in great detail, I've been Carl from the Ox Den. You take care of yourself.